Jehovah Malak, Ola Malamot, Jehovah Malak, Yami Rakis, Jehovah Gadol, Makarian Theos, Jehovah Erdanai, Jehovah Elohim, Kurios Theos Manta Kreta, Kurios Theos Pistos, Elda et Ehova, El Emuna Jehova. Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, O Pantacreta, Basileos, Basileon, Kai Kurios, Kurion, Yehovah Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar, Yehovah Elohim, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura, El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos, Ton Christon, Isun, Ton Kurion, New Mahagion, Pantacreta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. Zoan Logan, Ogar, Tautios, Dulas, Desmios, and Despotes, and Isus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. New Mahagion, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. Yehova Ishmal Kam, Yehova Shamma, El Nakum Yehova, El Nakum Yapa, Natsak Israel La Sheker, Gava Gava, Triambos Yehova, Isus Christos, Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion, Kurion Nimahagion, Panta Kreta, Mora, Rosh, Nasa, Elohim, Elohim, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura, Derek, Emunabakar, Meshvat, Shava, the Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness. That the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkano to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, understanding the very purpose of our life which is to grow up step by step, breath by breath, to be refined. As the word says in Revelation 22, 11, the one who is holy, let him become more holy. Eventually, in any area of your field, man goes on to the expertised level of knowledge or expertised level of contribution in that particular subject. As he moves on, the plant grows on. The same thing over here when we look the word day by day teaches to us to get more refined. Because the removing of the impurities by melting the metals the same procedure putting us into the burning furnace of the fire by removing 
the impurities. Though it has been heated up seven times, gold still remains gold. So here, the word of Lord God is been so pure for us. It day by day goes on to cleanse our inner man with the demands of the word of the Lord and makes us to confirm to the teachings of the word of the Lord. Therefore, the psalmist writes for us, Thy word, which is called for us to be translated over here as Imra or the word goes on to be the origin of Torah. He says, this Imra which will fill up, which will fill the whole because being a continuation of the segments or the words being blended together to form sentences. Our life is meaningless till, till if we not make up to combine from Genesis to Revolution to get something new out of this both old and new put together. So it doesn't have the continuation of the segments or blending of this word so that we can say we are talking the word of God. Every believer has been designed for that work. But today, people are not happy to look, to open up their mouth. If ever they open and they talk, they do not resemble the word of God. And though like the rich man, what we find in the book of Gospel of Luke chapter 16, if Lord God the Holy Ghost records and keeps the word, particular color of the clothing, purple which has been used for the rich man, and in Proverbs chapter 31, we read the same word purple. And here in Proverbs chapter 31, the word purple resembles that you have been clothed up in the sense you trod down under your feet, Satan. And the work over here for the rich man, what we look, being plausious enough by wearing that clothing to trample down Satan under his feet, he did not confirm to the will of God to make his every word, that's what we are looking over here, to make his every word being blended together to form sentences, if ever he opens up his mouth to be the divine oracles, or if ever he has been seasoned, seasoned with salt. He hasn't opened up his mouth to form those things which are in reality to look the purple clothing given to him by trampling down under his feet. Each and every thought getting into captivity for Christ and not giving place to the devil but rather resisting it and making up his every word to be like the word of God he tramples down in the power of that purple color. But the rich man did not live the life of God. He lived, though he has been given the caliber of Plausius riches, though he has been clothed up with fine linen of purple color to trample down Satan under, its feet, under his feet. Yet he spent his time in the will of this earth and he make up his life according to the standards of the thinking of men and not to the word of God. So dear brethren, here we find that each and every believer should be making up or blending up each and every word to be in confirmation with the word of God. Such is the reason why we have been given the purple clothes. Such is the reason why we have been told that the word of Lord God is very pure. And the Bible teaches to us for the word very pure meant to say that no matter whatever may be the pressure in life, 
he goes on to renovate the standards of his thinking only when he is opening up his mouth to be blended up in the purple color power of trampling satan under their feet having faith god the father said you can do great things having faith is nothing but making the thoughts of satan to be trampled down under our feet and today dear brethren much of the present christendom have absolutely failed to know they work as a rich man what he has given all the privileges of this church age we are rich in christ where with god the father he is able to make exceedingly abundantly above all they could ever think or ask being rich in christ we cannot be the people to be poor in the word of god we are poor in the word of god we are making the vast resources of the great riches of Christ into vain glory so dear brethren under such great riches of Christ the impact what we have in the word of the lord of god teaches to us no matter whatever may be the pressure renovate your standards of thinking by opening up your mouth to say s yes in faith to the word of god and no to the thinking of this world because you are wearing your purple clothes the purple clothes which trample satan under your feet every time so dear brethren the things pertaining to the word of lord god which god the father has prepared and kept for us on today's date we shall continue after this prayer sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of the lord of god which god the father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past infinitely divine holy father once again coming into the grace of lord to learn the word the traps of satan the strategies of satan the thinking which is causing many of the people not to learn the word of god that of father your word is very pure therefore we we'll love it because the purity of your word no matter whatever may be the pressure in this life we go through help us to think the divine view point of your word and make us to open up our mouth to teach nothing but thy word for us so father as we start we begin to study the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in the 20 past we pray the mentoring minister of lord god the holy ghost to enlighten and to challenge us by this message in Christ's name we pray sovereign lord amen as we looked yesterday from revelation chapter 19 in verse 7 to give honor in order to give honor we need to have boldness in the lord in order to have that boldness we looked in chapter 3 of acts the instructions given for us on behalf of this lame man as the church we go through even we have been provided by the lord of a god to partake or to become strengthened upon our knees or ankle feet to stand up to walk and to show forth the signs of growth by leaping up and walking through the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost into the realm of the naon temple of god again showing forth the growth the growth of what we look understanding that the word of lord god is very very pure so showing forth leaping up again and describing the attributes of god so dear brethren we have been told every breath of our life being in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost to walk 
and to praise God. But today, if you don't understand the importance of having your every word, this is very important, dear brethren. In Proverbs chapter 31, as we are looking into that context, it is been told in verse number 17 or 18 that the clothing is very well described over there for us. It says in verse number 22, She maketh herself coverings of tapestry, and the word tapestry we read, it is called first to renovate the standards of your thinking that could in return impact your body by making your perception gates to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So it is as the word marbat meant to say as a covering, as a coverlet. And this marbat, it has been spread out as a bed covering. So she the church is been told maketh asa buildeth up herself with the coverings of tapestry that is she covers with the things of the word of god right from the top of the head till to the top of the feet as a man thinketh so he is if your thinking is the word of lord god your body is absolutely fit and fine and no matter the perception gates from where you get your perception you are going to take that which is the perception of the Word of God. And apart from that, any other thing of perception, what these people consider to be valuable, it's absolutely vain and vain. So here we find, she maketh, she buildeth herself with the tapestry, her clothing, the word labesh, which meant to say to put on clothing. And what it is? Her discipleship program, the clothing what we look is discipleship program and that discipleship program to her body in the munching process of the word of God. So clothing is nothing but your brother. As a disciple, the day by day growing up, day by day learning up, making up the realm of the tent of your body to be the munching process of the Word of God. So this is very, very important, as much of the people don't understand. The time that they let go, the time that they have been given, if they don't cover up with the clothing, as Ephesians 4.24 teaches, the clothing's what we have. The new man clothing's putting off the old man, putting on the new man. And being taken in the realm of Endikai Suine Kai Hosetis Tes Alethiya, we need to learn the Labesh, which is a discipleship program, making up the reality of your body to be filled up with the munching process, of the thinking process of the Word of God. The first one, tapestry wherewith she gets every perception of thought to be renovated according to the word of God. The second one, her clothing, making a discipleship program, putting on in the tent to understand the munching process which has to be according to the realm of the mind of Christ. And then here it is mentioned two clothes. The first one is the silk, the word silk called to be the bleached white, and here the word silk, what we find the pictographical representation meant to, teaches twice. It's as good as to say the Berean crowd, how they went along to cross-check. After the teaching of Apostle Paul, the same thing over here, twice. Twice the teeth, twice the munching process. So here we find twice. The first one, silk, what we look, it's a process of twice making up to realize the importance of the Word of God twice. And then afterwards we find purple. Here we get the word purple. 
And what is this purple? It is nothing but for us, dear brethren. Argaman, we read this word. And Argaman is nothing but now you show up in your mind or in your thoughts. You have been erected in you. The edification complex of the soul in accord with the word of God. So the edification complex of your soul, the mentality has been changed from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint. The norms and standards have been changed from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint. Your consciousness is absolutely aware about the word of God. Earlier it was to the world, grieving, squelching, waxing, lying and resisting Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But now your consciousness is absolutely to the mind of Christ. So, your mentality changes, your norms and standard changes, your consciousness changes, your evolution, earlier it was to the world, but now you become to the world. So, dear brethren, here we have the facets of the soul being completely transformed from human viewpoint into divine viewpoint. And now, since it becomes a divine viewpoint, the word purple or argaman, it meant to say in the pictographical representation of the truth that your head is been now not only just renovated, but it has in it a completed erected structure of the word of God. It has in it the renovation of the standards of the thinking of the mind of Christ. And since it has in it the thinking of the mind of Christ, it meant to say, man of feet, a man who has been not just a kid now, he's not just like the drinking milk category or the youth eating bread category, but he's now an adult one called to be Huyo's son, the responsible son. And since he is now an adult son, a responsible son, as the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of this adult son, so Romans 8, we learn the importance that this man has erected for him to walk on his feet. That's what we were looking yesterday in the reality of the standards which we take upon as the word of Lord God. For that man over 40 years, who was lame from the mother's womb, the lame one should now erect in him a man of feet. For that he says two simple mechanisms, arise. If you don't arise, or if you don't agyro from the seriousness of which the word of Lord God teaches to us, the condition on the church age, to look upon the salvation which is very near, then you think by. If you don't arise, the thinking of this word of God, if you don't look and understand the mind of Christ, if you don't arise, that's the point. From a lame as the church, you know dear brethren, we have to compare our church age to that lame man. Because even we are not able to wake up from the standards of this life. Earlier, believing in Christ, as Mika 3.2 goes to say, or Amos 3.2 goes to say, not Mika 3.2, it has to be Amos 3.2. Apart from Israelites, I know not anyone on this earth. So he considers us to be lame now. The same thing in the Gospel of John 10. He said, I have another flock. He compares to us now there. The same thing in Romans 11 described. The original branches are cut off. The engrafted branches have been tied up. So these things we need to look very carefully, very seriously. So here, we are compared to a lame one being born from the mother's womb. And since we are the lame ones, in the fellowship of this player of Paltimore privilege privileges given to us in the church age. As we read that in Isaiah 5, 4, what else I can do that I haven't done to this vineyard? 
He has done for us much more than the most. And since he has done for us much more than the most, what we can ever think or imagine or make up, we have for us the importance to realize that in this church age, though we are lame, we are called now to stand on our feet and to take the lead by walking breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, and making to be every day, every breath of our life, to be greater than the past generation or the past dispensation of the Jews, or anyone could ever be even in the future. We have been made up, we have been told, we have been called from a lame man to stand in your feet by wearing up the purple colored dress. That's what we compare the same purple colored dress in Luke chapter 16 to the rich man. Many are called, few are chosen. When we look into that category, we understand why it is. Though you have been given equal privilege, though you have been given equal opportunity, why is it that you are not able to make up your life in the realm of that purple color authority? And in Luke chapter 16, we find earlier to that seven or eight verses from verse number one, the unjust steward, this man who goeth upon to the realm of this life to think and to consider that since he cannot work he will get compromised with the details of life so he calleth to them he says you owe me so much okay I will make you like this and then he says that the men of this generation are wiser than the children of life and then he starts up with this parable, the rich man and the Lazarus. We have to look the context over there first. And there he compares to that unjust steward to the realm of the Jews. And when he's teaching a lesson from there for us, he's emphasizing to be a man wherewith you have been given all riches. In the simple sense, he has given to us all privileges of the church age. Plausius, the word. And what privileges he mentions on this earth, your clothing is purple linen. When you go back to the heaven, your clothing will be white linen, but now your work on this earth is a purple kind of a linen work. And what is that purple we are reading over here? Argama. And over here, what we look this word, it meant to say, you have to renovate the standards of your thinking, conforming to the image of Christ, Romans 8, followed by to the standards of the thinking of Christ in Ephesians 4. So here we find these two things. The first thing, you have to wear up your purple cloth. The day when you believe in Christ, grow up into the knowledge of Bible doctrine day by day, breath by breath, you will be coming to understand that you have to be the thinking of purple. By that we meant to say every breath you trample down Satan under your feet because you are covered up with double filtered silk. You have been given to make up with tapestry your thinking. So the logic is very simple over here. In Proverbs 31 what we are looking at the church which we compared and we taught for you long back. This woman she wears these clothes. Why? As a lame we are, being chosen in Christ, He makes us now to give you all the necessary equipments to make you to be well qualified, to make you to be well prepared. And since He has made you to be well qualified and well prepared, there is no need for us to worry that whether can we stand on the feet? But God the Father says, I have made it to stand on your feet already. You have to believe. You have to agairo, arise. What a great instruction we have for us in the book of Acts chapter 3. 
He said, I cannot give you anything. I don't have anything to give. I don't have gold and silver. But in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I can ask you to arise and to walk. And this is a very, very great one. So here we find in 3.7, he said in 3.6, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Arise, that is rise up, and the word is agairo in comparison with Ephesians 5, we read that. Arise and walk. And peripatao in the spear of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Though we may be born right from the mother's womb lame, God the Father wants us because he has clothed us in the realm of true righteousness and holiness. And he has put upon us a purple cloth, a purple linen. Dear brethren, you believe it or not, purple resembles trading down under your feet. As we have been told in Romans 16.20, speedily, tacos, you shall trade down Satan under your feet. And the day when we believe in Christ, Satan knows very well it cannot touch us until and unless we ignore the word of God. When we fail to renovate the standards of our thinking according to the demands of the word of the Lord God, until then, the logic is very simple, very clear, very true. Satan cannot touch because greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. Satan cannot possess you, but it can influence you, it can try to influence you to fall into the wrong hands, the wrong teachers, the men who do not make you to understand. If you are not a disciple, you cannot be for Christ. And that's the problem for us over here. People today don't understand that you have to be a disciple, John 1.12, being born in the will of God. If you're not a disciple grown up or trained up for more than one year, you cannot be called as Christians. Far as you think your nominal way of life is absolutely brilliant, but we look, you are still right from the mother's womb lay. Some are handicapped not to have the information. Some are handicapped in the sense they are lame not to find the information. As the way we look upon in Deuteronomy chapter 8, though he has been said day by day, in chapter 8 verse 2 through 4, Leaping, lumping, though the feet was calloused, they would come for the physical manna which used to be before the sunrise, if not the manna would be melted off. Everyone would come to gather up that physical manna. Whether their feet was been calloused, whether their feet was been grieved, whether he was on a handicap, Know how much of an information we have over here to synchronize. So that every time when we can find in Psalms 119 in verse 4, Thy word is very pure, O Lord, in comparison with John chapter 21. He says, the things which Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has done are vast. Even if this earth would be the paper, every tree as, as a pen for a scribe, and every believer being a scribe in the Lord, if you would go to describe the deeds of my Christ, the whole heaven and the earth cannot contain them. So he will declare there the word of the Lord of a God being very pure. Very pure meant to say, no matter whatever may be the pressure in this life, you open up your mouth in the erected structure of the thinking of Christ, being Christ edified in you. In order to get that food, we illustrate of the Deuteronomy chapter 8, no matter whether the feet were calloused. You know, if you don't go to gather your man on that particular day, you should stay hunger. But people are not able to realize now, this manna, what they're taking, the physical thing, is nothing before the spiritual manna. And since they're not able to gather up the spiritual manna day by day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, they are in return being tortured or miserable or not having the great peace of Christ called to say, umbilical cord of relationship with the Lord. And since they don't have that, they absolutely end up 
in misery and Satan takes the lead because Satan knows very well it cannot even touch you. Because you are called to trample down Satan under your feet, Romans 16, 20. In return, Satan cannot even touch you, dear brethren. You are giving an occasion to Satan when you are ignoring the word of God, when your thinking is corrupted, when you are not been looking according to the reality of the mind of Christ. So, dear brethren, we need to wake up as from the lame, from the mother's womb, we have to now become the men of feet standing to trample Satan under your feet at every breath. So here we look, the man called to be the rich one. Both are being of the same breed. Lazarus at one end, the rich man at other end. In Abraham's bosom, as we look over there in Matthew Gospel, he writes, many will come from the east and the west. They will sit in the bosom of Abraham. But the children of the elected one, they will be cast off. There they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So here the rich man was been provided with all mannerism of riches that are needed for him. Plausias, the Greek word, is very strong. It doesn't mean to say what is necessary. In fact, indeed, the Bible so records his burial is also been noted. That means the rich man's way of burial will be something different. But this poor man, Lazarus, when he has been dead, his burial point has not been noted. Because he knew very well that body will be taken care of by the angels. When he's coming in the resurrection body, God the Father will rise that. But when we look specifically the word buried mentioned over there at one end, the wealth of the riches of the rich man, the other end we look to make it a point to understand that they don't care. You are going to come up. Resurrection of the unjust, resurrection of the condemnation, resurrection of the shame. So it has been mentioned, it has been buried. Because you are using the valuable grace of Lord God to win glory, so it has been buried. And when we look into the life over here, the Lazarus, angels come to take up his, his soul and spirit, but not mentioning about his burial. Because no matter wherever may be, God the Father will pick it up to give him the resurrection body in the future. But here we mention specifically about the rich man, it has been buried, it meant to say, as the one talented one where he digged and kept his talent into the soil that is as good as burying it in the soil. So the plosious riches, though you have been clothed up with fine linen in the realm of purple color, you haven't been using it. Because the rest of the days of your life you have spent not to wear that cloth. If you are wearing that cloth, you are from lame person out becoming to be men on feet. So the burial point over here, what we look, is that the talent given to you like that one man, you are not working the work of God, you are working for your belly on this earth. What best you can be? Trying to prove that you are upper class, trying to prove that you are better. Men look at outward appearance, dear brother, and God look at inward. Men try to prove that you know God. Try to know that you have plausious riches of Christ. Among the midst of this patakas, that's the word we can call for this man Lazarus in the Greek poor. Patakas meant to say, begging home to home for a menial meal. You know, really, this man, how they are, they are poor, they are patakas. Outwardly, they appear in the world, in the realm of the fashion of this earth to be rich. But in reality, towards the word of Lord God, as the Bible says, if ever anyone would boast, let him boast that he knoweth me, that he understandeth me, that he realizeth me. That understanding, that realization, potokas. But in the earthly thing, like the rich man, you are rich. 
so that even you, whatever you do, it has been absolutely for you as a great famous thing. But the word says it has been just worthless. It is not worthy. Men love to have that standards of potakas. But the real potakas, as the word says in James, they are rich in faith. They are rich in love towards Christ because they have nothing but Christ as their only property. But the men who are rich in this world, being enemy with God, because they love the world and the possessions of this world, they, though Alexander the Great, being teaching to them, carried by the doctors his dead body, saying that doctors cannot save your flesh, putting on the realm of keeping both hands outside of the boxes, saying that there is nothing you get, nothing you take, and throwing before his that march procession before him the valuable gold or whatever he has been earned to say even money cannot buy you even the rich man what we can look in comparison on this earth because we know about the alexander the great they call him even that rich man he says nothing you have all the money to save your body you cannot you have all the riches to go on to say you can build an empire it is vanity, it is worthless. So dear brethren, we need to understand that though you are rich in the world, you may boast upon your riches. The Bible says, if any man will boast, let him boast that he knoweth me, that he understandeth me, that it is I who exercise the loving kindness and the greatness of our Lord on this earth. These things are very important, dear brethren. People to the most what they can on this earth. You can wear gold shoes. From top to bottom you can have gold. Your clothing gold. In fact, your sunglasses if you want make it up with gold. So what? That's vanity. That's vain. If you don't have Christ. Like the Trump when we look upon while he was in president of USA, some of the photos being uploaded, we find everything being with gold, he's so rich, he's so that, so what? Christ our Lord our God wants you to be rich in the word of God, in knowing and understanding Lord God. So here on the earth, as we are going through this pilgrimage trip, if you are rich, so what? If you are poor, so what? If you're rich, you're trying to prove about this below poverty land men saying that I have my own status, I drink only the mineral water, I can't drink the water like you, so what? All in one or the other day. You know, as Job says, his birth is also from the mother's womb. Even as such, my birth is also from the mother's womb. Even the death is an invitation to the rich, to the poor. It's for all in common. So becoming rich over there, acting to be something good, at least save your money and give for the poor people because the expense is what you spend. Some families in India, they can survive for the expenses in the sense what you spend for the things to show off that you are having some status symbol or a brand symbol. You know, to say that we wear nothing but all the time brand quality equipments or brand quality t-shirts. Have good quality which will not harm your skin. Though it doesn't have any brand on that. Have good quality for it. Enjoy the goodness of that. Rather than spending your money to say that you are a quality. Indirectly you are telling to the world, I am rich. When you're wearing such quality, this quality, I don't say do not wear. But the things of your expenses, what you're spending on that, in that if you would spare some money for the poor people, they would survive. Spend that money for ministry, where there are not enough good churches. Spend that money for preparing good Bibles. Spend that money for edification. Spend that money for the real, so that you can understand first the work of Christ, you know, the rich man, when we look in the book of Acts, chapter 4, when we read that chapter, when Barnabas, he went, he sold all his property, kept at the feet of the apostle, and everyone, as there was the need, they took it, because they knew that this earth is not permanent. We have to treasure up our things of property in the heaven, not on this earth. On this earth, what he says? 
You be content with the food what you eat, with the raiment what you wear, and God will provide the needs because everything is covered under that word called as grace. You don't deserve what you wake up, what you eat, what you prepare, what you do. The charisma of Christ, the Cairo, the grace of my Christ, the never-ending love of my Christ, taketh us, leadeth us, guideth us. Nothing, dear brother, nothing is more important for us on this earth to worry. Because people think 101 things on this subject, but we know very well it is the grace of God. Under His grace, what He has given you to become, to earn money or to become something of a property-oriented rich man, use how much is needed the remaining thing give for Christ. Nothing on this earth is important. The earlier men, when we look in the first, the book of Acts, the apostles, everyone, they bought their riches, sold the property and bought and came and gave. Everyone as they were needed, they were all in equal terms. If anyone needed something, they were in, in reality of that and they were in such kind of a equilibrium status to use the word. Everyone had common. You know why? Because we cannot grow richness on this earth by boasting in gold, or by boasting in your army, by boasting in your stupid, worthless riches. If ever you boast, you have to boast that you know my Christ. If ever you boast, make sure that you have covered your nakedness by covering up with the word of God. So here, the rich man, you know, in reality of this life, we look that. Trying to prove something, you are greater than the poor man. Indeed, in the church age, Christ our Lord of God has plausious riches for us in the Lord. In Ephesians 3, when we looked at one unique word, verse number 10, to teach the manifold wisdom of Lord God, Polypicola's wisdom, is your only once. And the word polypicola's wisdom of the Lord God is so important to translate that. It purely teaches to us the importance that we, the church age believers, are so blessed out. But what we are doing, we are not showing the riches of Christ. According to the riches of my Christ, is applied all things unto us, says the word of Lord God. We are not showing the riches of Christ so that to prove to the world that the word of Lord God is very pure. To show to the, world, to the world that the things, even if Christ our Lord our God works, could be described, as we read that word, Bengal. If every believer being a scribe, every tree being a pen, and everything to be written on the earth, the sky to be the paper, you cannot describe the things of the Lord God. He says it is too vast than that. And the same thing over here in Amos, we look in chapter 7, the words which... Amos was speaking, the lion was not able to bear them. Today the words of a bolded spirit of Holy One guiding and leading them to fear God rather than men have become very, very scanty. The earth is able to bear now the words of these pastors or the so-called clergyman titles, whatsoever it is, the flattering titles. It is able to bear them. Because they teach to you the riches of this world, not the riches of Christ. They're able to bear them. And that's the problem today for us. Trying to dob you with untempered mortar. If ever you open up your mouth, share a tough oratories, not the oracles of God. But Amos, we look over there, the land was not able to bear because the truth is bitter. The earth, the flesh, the devil, they don't have to look upon the standards of the word of God being taught accurately. They love lies, they feed lies to your flesh. Therefore now, since there is no proper word of Lord God in our pulpits being taught word by word, land by land, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, and carrera upon carrera, with proper isagogic exegesis and categories of the word of the Lord God taught dispensationally, 
Since this work has not been done, the land is able to bear what? It is able to bear the lies. But in reality, the mind of Christ is so strong to teach us that the earth cannot bear the teachings of the Lord. It's not possible for you. The things pertaining to the word of Lord God and his work being done are so vast. The polypyclos wisdom of God is so vast. Today they have become to sleep. They haven't been thoroughly taught. And since they haven't been thoroughly taught, there is no boldness. In the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to teach the truth, there is no boldness. In Acts chapter 4, when they say, do you think we need to fear men or God? The same thing with Galatians 1, Apostle Paul, if I were here to please men, I wouldn't have been the born slave of the Lord. The same thing with the reality of Amos, the words, the earth, that time couldn't contain them because the earth doesn't want the truth. Because the prince of the power of this air is Satan and satanic oriented men as Satan won't change no matter what it is. So this man will never change to take, get in the word of God. But in reality all the days of this life they love to spend into the realm of vanity of vanities so that the earth now it can contain or sustain the world. We have to witness to these people followed by the angels. We have a great true life for us to witness. And what we need to witness? That the word of Lord God is very, very pure. Though we have seen the end of all perfection, the commandments of the Lord of our God is too vast. We have to make known to these people to understand that we have been clothed up with purple linen in Christ. That's the reason we can get back and trample down Satan in our feet. But you are not coming up out from the womb of your mother to be still lame, far less you can become a man of feet. The same thing with the rich man given to him Plausius riches. The same thing with the church church believer, though you are poor, you have been made rich in Christ. For the great things what you have in the Lord. They have been given the plausious riches of Christ. You are not able to wake up, neither understand the great and unique importance of such plausious riches being colored with linen, of being colored with purple linen. To look upon the time, looking upon the time to trample down Satan under your feet. And yet you look to boast the riches of this earth. <laughs> you look to talk about the standards of this earth. You look to consider about that you have known many things on this earth. So what? If you prepare your place yourself to have a space in heaven, so what? If you have made your name in the Guinness Book of World Records, so what? People are so foolish to think money is everything. But we are brethren, glorifying God the Father, having Him to be above than anything else to be honored. By making our lives to honor Him with great boldness of truth. There could be nothing greater than that on this earth if you can ever achieve. Being poor, you can transform yourself into rich. The stages of your life may change. Now you become a branded man. Earlier you were just brandless, but now you will become a branded man in return. As the time goes by on this earth, But when once you enter into heaven, when your time has been out, there there is no way that you can change your status again from Potocas to Plausias. No way, you cannot. 
The time what you have lost, you have lost on this earth. The only thing that you need to work is this privilege of time given for you on this earth. The day of your birth doesn't matter. The day of your born again does matter. Being born again till to the day you die, day by day as you pray, give me wisdom to teach or to make my days unto the wisdom, to account my days unto the wisdom, because everything will be recorded and will be asked an account for it. There is an account being asked on behalf of you. Everyone should give an account. If you are not first accounting over here as a scribe to write the word of Lord God and grow up in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, tomorrow you need to give an account. In that account, you need to be counted worthy for that kingdom which God the Father said, no marriage, neither given in marriage, neither taken in marriage, they will be like angels. But here on this earth we have to prove that we are confirmed to the image of Christ. The sad part in our lives is what, dear brethren, you are not able to be aware when you are born again. You are not able to be aware, gradually you have to grow up to talk every word of the Lord God is pure because you represent Him no matter whatever may be the pressure. You renovate the standards of your thinking. You open up your mouth according to the thinking of the word of the Lord of a God. So you are not able to realize these things on this earth. And yet... You are spending your time like that one man, one talented man who digged and kept, who is buried. Though you have been given the plausious riches, you know what we are enjoying today, the plausious riches of Christ is so vast and true and unique. Nothing of such kind of a records of plausious riches or plerum of paltium or privileges of Christ in the church age which have been given unto us will be repeated again to anyone. We have something great and unique in this church age. And the reason why we constantly call you or ask you to become the recipients of this grace, because you are given the caliber like that rich man in the manifold wisdom of God to wear the clothes of purple. Because the church covers up with the silk, double munching process. The church puts on the purple clothing. And yet today we are not aware about the standards of your purple clothing. A purple clothing is nothing but in you. You have to erect the structure to prove that the very word of Lord God, every word of Lord God is pure. Every word of Lord God is absolutely clear. You can prove that when you are opening up your mouth, no matter whatever may be the pressure to witness the truth, and that demands great boldness in the Lord. And in the present Christendom, much of the men are not aware that they could be, as the men opening up their mouth, as per the demands of the word of the Lord. Why families perish? Why Satan like a roaring lion upon the realm of First Peter chapter 5 to consume away the marriages. Because you are not having the thinking of Christ. How beautifully the Lord of God has ordained the order. For Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the head is God the Father. The thinking is of the Father. For every believer, the thinking is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For male believer, we talk specifically. And for his own wife, it is the thinking of a husband. So... Look now, the head is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for a, for a husband. For a wife, the head is a husband. In return, the husband who has renovated his standards of thinking according to the word of Lord God would employ there for you. But in reality, they are not clothed up with linen. What a sad thing it is. You are not put upon the purple clothing. But you are yet in the mother's womb. To be like that lame man. The instructions given to that man. In the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Arise. And walk. The process of arise. Leaping up from there. Standing first. Then leaping up. 
and then walking up and then breath by breath making to be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to the reality of the Word of God and producing to be more holy more pure day by day refining breath by breath refining Therefore, we have called to meditate upon the word of Lord God day and night. Since we have been told to refine, since we have been told to get breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we have to go on from glory to glory. In that sense, we have to be well standing up to peripata or to mar or to walk and to march in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Today, much of the problem with us, like the rich man, we are spending our life on this earth in doing our own lust of the flesh to be consumed. On this earth, as the rich man lived his life, not to God, but to his own self, so we are. We are making up our life to live not to wear the purple cloth. We are living up our life only for the standards of our own stupidity. Therefore, we run the right race of this life. I don't say you shall not run. God the Father provides you the food. You know, dear brethren, first priority of your life on this earth is to graduate in the word of God, confirm to the image of Christ. Then next, anything will be added. First seeking his righteousness and his kingdom. Then next, anything, whatsoever it is, from top of the from top till to the bottom. The things after the time, the tithe of your time, which you need to pay back to God the Father, two hours, forty minutes. After that, the life that you are living, God the Father will bless it abundantly. In everything, he wants you to be very pure. In everything, he wants to make up your talent to understand that we shall not be digging and keeping. In everything he leads us to know that you have now erected the structure of Bible doctrine so you can trample down Satan under your feet. In everything we look, the word of Lord God being so pure and clear that if we, right from the mother's womb, what you were like a lame, if you don't stand up upon your feet and walk, by consuming the riches of this world, by consuming the great grace of Christ, by consuming the riches of the Word of God, the riches of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the plethora of Baltimore privileges of all time, not only the completed can of Scripture given in our hands, but being indwelt in this wretched body by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. Since we have been given much and expected much, we cannot be the recipients to say, we don't have the fruits, having only the leaves of the figs. It could not clear the hunger of my Lord, and he cursed it. We cannot be the same category of the people. Because whenever we open up our mouth, it has to be the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Every Argatha's words being spoken up, which is not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, you will be judged for it. And the one who wants to look and taste many days on this earth, to see greater days on this earth, refrain himself from evil, make up his tongue to be out of the standards of this earth and to be in the fellowship of the Word of God. That's what we read in 1 Peter 3, dear brother. But since your tongue is not been taught to be the tongue of the learned, because they're dumb dogs, dogs which cannot bark, you have been still lame. And since you are lame and not able to walk according to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit on this earth, it meant to say you haven't yet stood up. And since you're not able to stand up and walk according to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, 
you cannot trample down satan under your feet and since satan is not been trampled down by getting every thought into captivity for Christ and living our life pure and holy to God the Father in everything honoring Lord God at every breath giving glory and praise to God the Father you are a failure so first from the lame position we have to be strengthened in our ankles we have to stand up upon our feet we have to walk in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit breath by breath and since we have this the great one in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit breath by breath we cannot be to prove to the world when they ask repeatedly like the heathen which rage where is your god but every breath in return we have to be the people to prove lord god is in us he leadeth us he guideth us he teacheth to us that now we are standing on the feet and day by day we will become the word of the lord being refined and since we have in us the spirit of lord and savior jesus christ indwelling controlling and guiding us every word of us should be absolutely pure and since every word of us should be absolutely pure the earth cannot contain the people will not like people are not happy to learn the truth people are not happy to realize the truth and since they don't like it since they don't love the truth you have to be very very clear to put upon the clothing of silk as we read the word silk in proverbs 3122 for double munching that meant to say double you have to refine your thinking it is not just to read the translation you have to go back to the hebrew you have to come back to the greek you have to learn and understand what is the meaning of that because the people are inculcating the thoughts according to the interpretation of the things for them what they have there but in reality in the hebrew it is something in the greek it is something there are so many great vast things for us to learn from there so they don't look into that so we have to wear the clothing of silk the bleached one that means a double filtration double refining when we are double refined then we can say the word of lord god is very pure because the word pure saraf it is called to refine and since they are not refining it they are not able to make up their life to be refined according to the demands of the word of the lord god they have absolutely failed to wear the clothes of silk and the purple linen you have to refine no matter whatever may be the pressure the refining process no matter whatever may be the pressure first priority number 1 the thinking of christ to reign in you <laughs> and that's what people are not able to understand just come back and look and count what is your thinking where is your thinking what is the origin of your thinking they are not able to realize that the thinking should be from christ that's the reason he gave the pastor teachers efficiency for so that they can have the thinking of christ in them the thinking to be according to the demands of the word of the law and yet dear brethren much of the time in the church age the pastors themselves are not thinking a refined thinking in the word of god to preach to you the truth they dobbing you with untempered mortar with the titles which are worthless which are useless 
which are absolutely nothing. And they haven't refined the thinking to give you the best. To make it to get out from the lame to the standing position. When once you wear upon the purple clothing, you stand on your feet. And that's the intention of God the Father right from the day we are born again in Christ. That we shall trample Satan under our feet as he sent King Saul on the work of destroying the Amakalites. So the work for us on this earth to pull down everything that goes against the high knowledge of the word of Lord God and to inculcate to you the mind of Christ, the thinking of Christ, the word of the Lord our God. And yet, dear brethren, the church age has been completely rotten up. Yet Christ, our Lord, our God, in His grace, He loveth. He gives you more grace so that you could become the will of God. You could be the glory of God. And you could make up your life according to the thinking of my Lord. So what is your life? In this great and unique dispensation of the church age, your life ought to be wearing purple linen. Renovate the standards of your thinking according to the thinking of Christ. Not to conform to this world, but to renovate, metamorphomai. And since you have to renovate the standards of your thinking according to the word of the Lord of a God, and make up your life according to the thinking of the Lord of a God, it's a great high and unique privilege in Christ to trample every breath that which goes against the word of God, the thinking of Satan under our feet. Because we are purple clothed here, when we get back home it is white linen clothed, the deeds of the righteous ones who have done the will of God. And every soul, every breath, what we take, we prove that we are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We are under the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And we wake up our life to live according to the standards and demands of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, which way you want to go? If you want to be trampled by Satan, then forget the plausious riches given to you in the church age. You are in search of the earth, the riches of this world. But you are not searching in the word of God, the true riches of Christ, which can make you to trample down Satan, which can make you to have a life which is absolutely like a ruler of a king, representing king and living like a king. And as Christ our Lord our God said, as you say, I am king. To witness the truth, I have been born. When you witness the truth, you are reigning like a king. You are making up inculcation your life according to the king's standards. The standards of this truth, the standards of this Christ. You are making up your life according to the reality. Recognizing and realizing that we are king in Christ. And really, dear brother, and what a great life we have for us to understand on this earth. That we are called, born, after the manner of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to be kings, witnesses for the truth. And since you haven't still put upon this great life of searching to be a king, a ruler, in the truth, you will end up absolute miserable life. You will be thinking why and how I am miserable because you are not having your true umbilical cord of relationship with God the Father. Your true umbilical cord of relationship with God the Father will make you to be well qualified to share the great happiness of the Lord 
as he walked in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, as he told for us to walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, and not to let go the time, but rather to be every day, every breath, in the marvelous fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, and to make up our life to the standards that which could be, that there is nothing that can touch you, your enemy, your anything, till Christ our Lord our God is always there. For you purpose on this earth, the plan on this earth, to reign in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, He doeth. Wicked one cannot even touch you. You may have near-death experiences, but yet Lord God will save you. It will not happen to it will not make it to happen to face such accidents or deaths. Though Satan is constantly trying, yet it is God the Father who controlleth and who leadeth. And they that have put such seal upon their heart that they know the Lord of a God, that eternal Lord God is our refuge, and under his everlasting arms is great strength. We have to witness every word of the Lord God is absolutely pure. And the people who witness that every word of Lord God is absolutely pure are those who love it. And since they are, they will be into the realm of such life as the word of Lord God teaches. The earth cannot contain the words of such great mind of Christ. Therefore the people hate you. And Lord our God said, if they hate you, rejoice. Your reward is great in the heaven. If they consider you that you are a blasphemous one, don't worry, rejoice. You are having greater rewards for you in the heaven. And therefore, since we love the word of Lord God, called to be a hope, which is to make a constant expression joy in our body, that's what it is, having to look forward with a constant expression joy. They that are the servants, the word servants meant to say repeated witness, the work which has been performed out of gratitude towards Christ. They keep their eye point completely in the word of God and they mould up their body in the fellowship of the word of the Lord by getting every thought into captivity for Christ. So, the word of the Lord God is very pure. And the word very is called over to be ma'ad exceedingly. Ma'ad, again it goes to be a repeated witness in the Aleph energy by getting every thought into captivity for Christ from the perception gates. So the word ma'ad and the word pure is called to be sarat. And that meant to say refined, by re to remove the impurities and further making up it to be molded according to the potter who is going to make up that pot uh, or that potter who is going to make up that pot according to the desired design of him as he told to learn that lesson from Jeremiah in that great record of the word of the Lord. So dear brethren, we have the things pertaining to be that the word is called to be compared as gold, but more pure gold than that is the word of God. So it is purity in the sense reflecting the holiness of Jehovah's character, Jehovah's government, and requiring and leading to purity of heart and life. That's the word. And since the word, what we call over here Imbra, which is your blood as disciples in the Lord, it meant to say it requires to lead to show forth to these people the purity of heart and the purity of life. So dear brethren, such great word which has been given for us to be a continuation or the blending of the thoughts or the forms of sentences from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 and making up our life to be in the realm of such plausious riches of Christ. Why shall we live a life like the rich man and end up in hell? Why shall we live a life like that one talented man who digged and put the talent into the soil? 
out of ten we find three men were asked of account in that the first one out of ten he made ten the second one out of five he made five but the last one though he was been given one talent he digged and kept and the remaining seven <laughs> they looked them that these people will never grow up to realize that they have been out of that lame kind of life into the into the walking of steps on their feet they never realize that they have been put out from such lame life and now they should stand upon their feet and walk in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit so many are called few are chosen the reducing of the church will become where two or three been gathered even the third one is disqualified only two the ten talented one and the five talented one and the remaining things what this both they did the one talented one is been erased and the remaining seven when he has given those talents to 10 men he takes account only of three the remaining seven he knows very well they are already lame they cannot be coming out by great faith from the life of that lame standards into the riches of Christ but whereas we find Lazarus the man being faithful to the lord the same thing with us being poor in this world and rich in Christ is more important than being rich in this world and to be found nothing in the lord to say absolutely not recognized by the lord to say who you are because of iniquity depart from me calling to be hatiros like judas is correct when he called speedily you do what you want to do hatiros with a kiss you want to betray the son of man hatiros the same hatiros in luke 22 in verse number 12 when he said friend How you come over here without your wedding garments? He was speechless. Hatiros are those people. The people who are not able to understand that they have been free from lame and they have to stand into the real of the feet upon their work of holy ghost. They are still hatiros. They cannot produce in them the character of Christ. They are still hatiros. and since they are still at tyros and they are not able to produce the character of christ god the father would call them they haven't a gear in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit neither they are peripatao in the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit so we find in them no signs of growth no leaping up and since we don't find in them the sign of growth or leaping up we can easily call them they will not enter into the gates of the temple with the inheritance of the saints to share the common things with the lord and since they can't enter into such great inheritance of the saints the bible records for us in the reality of the word of lord god to teach since they can't enter into the inheritance of the saints he cannot praise god he would simply by a byword or a password he could say with a greeting with his lips praise the lord as it is like a christians as the muslims have shalom walakum that meant to say peace be upon you they may say simply praise the lord but since they haven't raised from the position of lame person into the position of a man who has to trample down satan under his feet by wearing the garments of a purple one not having his part in the inheritance of the saints not having his life in the standards of the truth of the word of the lord since he doesn't have it he would simply say praise the lord but in reality is absolutely vain and weak such are the remaining seven out of the 10 mentioned in the gospel of luke about the talent parable only two out of 10 they made 10 out of 5 they made 5 even the other person he buried and kept since they buried and kept the same player of false him a privileges in the church age given to them they are also burying and keeping it up as the rich man was been buried and he ended up in the hell 
Not a point that you can be in the heaven. He ended up eating the hell. And we call you day by day to wake up out of that hell where there is a constant gnashing and biting of teeth. The rich man we look has been tormented. And if the Bible records he's been tormented, you have to be aware. To realize and to be eager enough and to understand with a great thirst that we have been out from the lame, from the mother's womb, to become a well-qualified man, to walk in the spirit. By trampling down Satan at every breath of our life. And yet, dear brethren, how many days more? You want to make up your life in lies to be based, rather than making up your life according to the demands of the word of the Lord. Dear brethren, every day the valuable grace of Lord God given unto us to refine ourselves, not to hide our iniquities like Adam, but rather to refine, 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 day by day, breath by breath, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to refine. And no matter what it is on this earth, as Elijah told to that widow of Zarephath, first provide for me, no matter whatever it is in that particular day, first provide your time to the word of God. Renovate the standards of your thinking. You will one day or the other wake up to the seriousness of this life to stand upon your feet and to shine forth as light luminaries in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations. Shine forth. You will walk to trample down Satan under your feet, breath by breath. If you are eager enough first to give time to the law, if you fail, you will also die eventually as unbelievers also die. The lake of fire being prepared for unbelievers followed by Satan and its entire angelic host which went along with it. And you as believers, why you want your part to be in that? Your part is not there. Your part is there with Christ in the heaven. The people who have met the standards of the demands of the word of the Lord. Revelation 21, 8, 21, 27, 22, 16. In three times we look the common word lies, lies, lies. Those who love lie, those who make to have time with lie. <laughs> the logic is very simple, dear brother, whether you believe it or not. Lies. And since it is the word of a lie, you have to be aware. That into the eternal lake of fire you will be casted off. Because you haven't made your life to move from lame into the man who stands on feet when he graduates in the word of God to eat the strong meat and as he graduates in the word of Lord God by eating the strong meat he will be for us into the reality of trampling down Satan under his feet by getting every thought into captivity for my Christ like the rich man you want to be burying the talent after your death, anyhow, you will be buried. On this earth, you buried the talent given to you by the Lord, the kingship, the royalty of priesthood, and the work of an ambassadorship, which you have done, you will be asked in account. Anyhow, you are burying it. After you die again, they will be noted that you are buried. But for Lazarus, angels come to take him because he was faithful to the work of the Lord, to the word of the Lord. And since he was faithful, there is no need for him to worry about his body where it has been buried. The resurrection body will take care of it. But the people who die nominal, who don't do the work of the Lord, who think 
a great memorial of burial has been needed. They have to preserve and keep for the sense, you know why? Already they're buried, their part is in the lake of fire. That's what we look after his death, Lazarus, into the torment of the fire. And since he has been in such a life, we have to come back as a great caution of warning on this earth. Even we, if we don't follow the standards of the word of the Lord our God, the demands of the word of the Lord our God, even we will be taken care into the lake of fire. Because Christ our Lord our God has designed on this earth for us to get every thought into captivity for Christ. To make it up the purple clothing to trample down Satan under our feet by walking and living the exact demands of the word of the Lord. So dear brethren, what is your life? If you still want to spend your time in the stupidity of this earth, wake up to the reality. Because the great preacher who has done great many practical examples pertaining his wealth, his wives, his children, his properties and whatsoever it is, he teaches to us that all things are vanity. And he gives conclusion in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. The things which are for God, the demands of the word of the Lord which you ought to do, if you have done it, if you have achieved it, right from the time of your youth take care to protect the word of God and nothing else on this earth and since you have been called to such kind of a great life in Christ make the wise use of your time in producing the character of my Christ rather than confirming yourselves into the lake of fire by ignoring to learn the demands of the word of the Lord my God so dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. With our head, board and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is for very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry so thorn lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season, because of the diamond to my witnesses, wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond to my witnesses in well infinity, follow the Bible in our hands. And number two, I'm out of my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic coast will be our witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way, dear brother, you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, we are grateful and thankful for this great privilege, O Lord, to redeem the time to learn and to understand that the word is very pure, being refined, so that we could make up our mouth, no matter whatever may be the pressure, to talk the thinking of Christ by trampling down Satan and our feet, to represent in our purple linen of clothing that we have been moved out from lame standards into the man under man standing on feet by trampling down Satan under his feet. So, Father, we commit everything into the mighty hands, bless us and challenge us by this message to the praise of your glory, being thankful to your work on this earth. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, and Lord God, the Holy Ghost, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Lord, Lord. Amen.